this is Angela with Progress Permaculture. I'm here with one of my adult children, Ruth, and I will go snag my other one, B, in just a couple of moments because today we are taste testing another unusual food from my permaculture garden. We're going to be testing Helianthus tuberosa, the sun choke. Now, this is a traditional indigenous food in North America. It is a native perennial root crop in North America. It grows very easily. You have to do almost nothing. Um, for me, my sunchoke area is amended with quite a bit of sand. That makes it much easier for me to dig up the tubers in the fall. And other than that, I don't do anything but plant once and then these really, really long sunflowers, like as, as long as 12 feet tall, can grow and then bloom with a very diminutive sunflower late in the season. And because they're perennial, they just overwinter. In fact, the tubers are where the plant stores its excess energy. These tubers are rich in carbohydrates, but they are high in inulin. And that means for some people, they can cause gas unless you cook them really long and slow. So one of the main ways that people enjoy sun chokes is by cooking them in the crock pot low and slow with a little bit of veggie stock or chicken stock for 12 hours, eight, 12 hours, and then mashing them. And that helps break down all that inulin, add a little bit of vinegar as well. But for me, I very much prefer them smashed. So we're gonna try them two ways today. We're gonna try the just simply boiled uh, with a little bit of salt sunchokes and then we're going to try some smashed ones and I'll tell you how I make these and also the recipe is down in the description so please be sure and check that out. Now, if you decide to grow sunchokes in your garden I have some videos where I talk more in depth about about growing them. I do want to say here that they are a good storage crop only in C2. You want to keep them in the ground. If you dig them up, they mold very, very quickly. They get a fuzzy mold on them. They have a lot of dips and curves and they don't store well in a bucket or in your refrigerator. They are best stored in the ground. When you want to dig them up and enjoy them, you just put your pitchfork in, pop them up, and there you go. There'll be a huge harvest of them. The main things that I have found feed on them are earthworms and slugs. Slugs can only get the ones that are at the very surface of the soil, but other than that, not much really bothers them and you get an abundant harvest year after year. Much like many of the perennial veggies that I grow in my garden, sunchokes will reproduce from any small amount that you plant. So you wanna be really careful not to put the scraps out in your garden or you will have created an entirely new patch of sunchokes where those little odds and ends have been thrown out into the garden. So be aware of spreading the tubers beyond your designated patch. Okay, so let's try these. BB, do you wanna come join us? We're gonna wait, we're gonna go grab B real quick. BB. Okay, so we've wrangled up B. The three of us are gonna try the boiled sunchoke. So for boiling them, much like a potato, you put them into a pot of cold water, cover them, add salt, boil until tender, about 10 to 12 minutes. Now, sunchokes have a, a natural skin on them, and when you boil them, this peels off much more easily. So if you don't like to eat the skin, boil first and then peel them. It'll come off much easier when it's fully cooked. So let's try some of the plain sunchoke here. Here's the bowl of them. Okay, they're just boiled. I'm not eating that. You want to try it first, B? I thought you love potatoes. You can tell me what you think of them. Here, try some. They almost feel like, like if it was a potato, I would say it's under undercooked. Mm -hmm. They don't have quite the same texture as potatoes. Okay. Wow, they smell like potatoes. What do you guys think? It's like potatoes, but they're a little crunchier and sweeter. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm losing yeah, my camera um, here. Let me, let me adjust a tiny bit. I would say almost like waterier like potatoes feel very dry mm -hmm. and these feel like <sighs> oh they're not as like starchy and fluffy mm -hmm. and flaky as a potato yeah i would say i like mm -hmm. them better i'm not the world's biggest potato fan well, For, i am and they're not as good as potatoes you don't think they're as good as potatoes for me i feel like the texture is more like a cooked carrot and the flavor is mm -hmm. kind of potatoey I hate I would crunchy say, potato. I hate them. I, so would I wouldn't eat this if I were a crunchy, if I were a potato fan. Okay, so so keep in mind this is just plain boiled with salt, nothing else. I would say that 
they're the texture is better than that of cooked carrots because i love carrots but i will not eat cooked carrots because of the texture but mm. i would eat this mm. okay. the flavor's pretty neutral though wouldn't you say it's not strong mm. it's not impressive it's sort of a base starch upon which you add other flavors right yeah it's like kind of like sweet rice mm. it's like a worse taro root mm. okay okay bees not a fan so far but okay so if you want to add more texture and flavor you have that base starch and you want to build on it you can do smashed sunchokes. So after you boil them until they're they're kind of soft, you let them cool down a little bit. And then you take the bottom of a cup or a bowl and you just smash them on the counter. And then you fry them in a hot cast iron skillet with olive oil or butter, about four minutes on each side. You can add rosemary, you can add um, definitely black pepper, you can add garlic, you can add paprika, whatever spices that you enjoy, you can add to it just like you would to any potato dish, except this is a native, perennial, easy to grow crop that is not prone to any of the diseases that tend to plague potatoes. Hi, oh. Hal. Do you want me in the video? Hi, Hal. How was your run? Good. Okay. We're filming. Cool. Do you want to be in our video? No. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to try this now. So do you guys, you can use your fingers or you can use a fork. Tell me what you think about these. Yeah, I Mmm, I really like them fried. They're much better like this, yeah? Mm hmm I feel like they're better than fried potatoes because they have more flavor. Mm hmm They're like sweeter. They're almost like, um, what was that? Like really stringy potato that we had. Oh, yucca? Mmm. They're kind of like that. Mm. You know what? They do have a little bit of a flavor of yucca, but they lack the kind of fibrous quality, but they're sweeter than a potato. For me, this is the best way I have found to prepare them is boil, smash, fry. They get really nice and crispy on the outside. The inside is sweet and succulent. They take the flavors. Thanks for Thanks for your, thanks for your Instagram hands. Beauty guru. Beauty guru. Um, they really take up the flavors of whatever spices you're using. And again, this is a crop that I have to do absolutely nothing to. Uh, I just planted them once 13 years ago and they reproduce readily on their own. I just go dig some up when I want to use them. So I know some of you have, you know, been told that sunchokes are kind of a, a permaculture darling. They are one of those perennial food crops that gets mentioned over and over. And then I see in permaculture forums, and discussion groups focusing like this is a really boring vegetable kind of bees opinion like they don't taste that great don't taste like much of anything and i just don't find them that uh appealing to me and why would i want to fold them into my regular diet try smashed sunchokes try them if you have not found another way to prepare them that you enjoy because i think you will be pleasantly surprised any other thoughts y'all oh gosh you guys have eaten all of them um they also kind of remind me of a piece left i'm gonna eat it Fried bananas. Yeah. Um, oh, because they're, and fried they're sweet. Mm. Um, fried? Like fried plantains. Mm -hmm. They are a lot like fried plantains. Yeah, that's a really good comparison, actually. You could probably make them like how Lily Market makes them. Which you guys don't know because. Deep fried? You're not real. But you could make them deep fried with like batter. Yeah, I think or even just shallow fried with the batter would be good too. You've mm -hmm. done them roasted a lot in the past. And again, I think this method is really superior. So if you have a favorite sunchoke recipe that you would like to share, please leave it in the comments. I would be really anxious to expand the ways that we can, can use this indigenous perennial low maintenance crop and more ways to incorporate it into our diet. So far, this one is a real winner and I'm sure that there are other winners out there. So Thank you so much for watching today. We actually have another food tasting video coming up really soon. So I hope that you will tune back in for that. And I hope you'll also check out down below my Patreon and other ways you can support this channel. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Sparkle on. It's Wednesday.